the the roots and stuff like that were extremely fibrous. We you know we've done we've done all the breeding, so we make them more starchy, so there's more calories. And, but initially, it wasn't a particularly good source of food, and that's not that would not have been reliable to, to grow this big brain. So it would have had to have been meat. It would have had to have been meat. It would have had to have been meat. We need to eat meat because meat eating is what caused our ancestors to develop such large and complex brains. Or so the critique of veganism goes. So here's three reasons why this doesn't hold up. There's lots of explanations for why we have big brains, and the meat caused big brains hypothesis isn't even the dominant one. Some people think it was fat, some people think it was tubers or carbs. Some people think it was cooking. Some people think it wasn't cooking. Some people think it was ecological or social or cultural. Nowhere could I find the meat hypothesis as being the prevailing explanation for driving the evolution of human brain size. The meat caused big brains hypothesis actually falls under a broader umbrella explanation known as the expensive tissue hypothesis, which suggests that in order for an organism to evolve a large brain without a significant increase in basal metabolic rate as seen in humans, the organism must use less energy on other expensive tissues. The paper introducing the ETH suggests that in humans, this was achieved by eating an easy to digest diet and evolving a smaller, less energy intensive gut. So the expensive tissue hypothesis isn't necessarily meat inclusive. In the past, those calories could have come from different places, and they can obviously come from different places today, as calorically and nutrient dense plant-based food is abundant. And even if those high calorie foods didn't exist, there's no shortage of food today. So you could just eat a higher volume of lower calorie foods. And even if the meat caused bigger brains hypothesis were true, it wouldn't mean what most people think it means. So for argument's sake, let's say it's true. Introduction of meat was a factor in the development of bigger brains, and it was one of the dominant factors. So does that provide justification for eating it today? Well, it depends on how you think evolution works. If you find this argument convincing, I'm gonna guess that you think it works like this. There was a tribe of humans who discovered meat. They ate some of the meat. Because the meat was nutrient dense, their brains got bigger. As in those individuals who actually ate the meat, their brains got bigger. And then you maybe think that their children then had bigger brains because of their parents' bigger brains. This is known as a Lamarckian view of evolution, named after the French zoologist Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, and is widely discredited. But even if it weren't, it's not what's being proposed in the expensive tissue hypothesis that people are referring to. Now, quick detour, there is a phenomenon known as transgenerational epigenetic inheritance that's Lamarckian in nature and has been demonstrated across a few traits in mice models. But it's a little beyond the scope of this video, so let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in hearing more about that. So if the Lamarckian view is debunked, how does evolution actually work? Basically by less fit individuals dying or reproducing less. The big brain meat hypothesis basically works like this. Imagine there's a population of 100 humans. Five of them have big brains and small stomachs, and 95 of them have small brains and big stomachs. If calories are scarce and difficult to extract from food, the big brain small stomach individuals will die or be less able to reproduce because their small stomachs won't be able to extract sufficient calories from the foods they eat. And because of that, they'll have fewer kids and their big brains and small stomachs will become less prevalent in the population with each passing generation. If calories are plentiful, so there's cooking or meat or tubers or fat, the people with the big brains and the small stomachs will have an advantage. Their stomach is totally capable of digesting sufficient calories from the calorie dense food, but now they have the advantage of more brain power. They thus survive more and are better able to pass on their genes. And so big brains and small stomachs will become more prevalent in the population with each passing generation. This is Darwinian evolution, and it's one of the most well-supported explanatory frameworks in all of science. So now with a better understanding of the expensive tissue hypothesis, you can maybe start to see why eating meat wouldn't cause you as an individual to have a bigger brain, nor would it cause your children to have bigger brains. You're going to pass on to your kids whatever genes you and your partner currently have. There's no changing that. The only way to change the proportions of brains and stomach sizes in the population today would be for some people to die or not reproduce. As in, if you have a small brain, you'd have to die off in order for there to be less small-brained people in the next generation. And if you have a big brain, you'd have to reproduce more than the average person for there to be more big-brained people in the population. To oversimplify, evolution is virgins dying. And in case you think I'm misrepresenting the science, here are two excerpts from the Harvard Gazette reporting on a 2008 lecture given by Leslie Aiello, the original proponent 
of this hypothesis. It's likely that meat eating made it possible for humans to evolve a larger brain, said Aiello. Our human ancestors were not wholly carnivores. That would be silly, said Aiello, who does not argue that meat eating caused bigger brains, just that it made bigger brains possible. So in summary, the meat hypothesis is neither the only nor the most accepted explanation for humans' big brains. Evolution is Darwinian, not Lamarckian. So you eating meat today doesn't make your brain or your children's brain bigger. And even if Lamarckian evolution were true, the abundance of food today, both with respect to absolute amount as well as caloric density, would still render meat eating totally unnecessary. So if you stayed to the end and learned something or have questions, please like and leave a comment as these videos take a lot of prep and research. And this isn't my full-time job. Being able to eventually generate an income off this will let me make the videos look better and I'll be able to put out more videos more frequently. Thanks for watching.